and welcome back to Mega John Space Axis. Today we're going to be talking about rotational inertia and how we can apply it to everyday situations. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it! First of all, we're going to break this, these two words down into two different concepts. Rotational, as you know, refers to rotation. And inertia refers to an object's tendency to resist change. Now, we've already talked about thermal inertia before. And we've also talked about inertia in, you know, Newton's Laws and my thermal inertia video. So, in thermal inertia, it refers to the tendency to resist change in temperature. However, in rotational inertia, it refers to the tendency to resist change in rotation. Now, in thermal inertia, you remember that we looked at different surfaces and how they can have different thermal inertia. But now we're going to talk about rotation inertia. Like say that we have something like a nut. And we want to turn this nut. Well, there is actually a formula for this. So what we do is, I, which is inertia, if we want to calculate the amount of inertia in this, equals a momentum, here, which we're going to put as L divided by our angular momentum divided by our angular velocity which is re represented as this W here. Now this is how we, this is the main principle in working out rotational inertia and it refers to a lot of everyday situations like um, start tightening a nut or even doing other things. For example if you couldn't tighten a nut that's because you need more torque. Now, as you know, kilowatts are actually made out of two different things. RPM and torque. Okay, we should just consider this T. RPM and torque. That's what, that's what generally is made up of kilowatts. So we can still have the same amount of kilowatts as a low amount of RPM and a high amount of torque, or we could have the same amount of kilowatts as a low amount of RPM um, a low amount of torque and a high amount of RPM, or and vice versa. So that's basically how the kilowatts works. So if we get more torque, so if so next time, if you can't turn that nut, you know what to do. Plug it into this formula, apply more torque somehow. You could you could yeah, you could use mechanical advantage to do that. The principle of mechanical advantage is, you know, you could use machines, different machines, to increase the torque on it, but you might just have to do more rotations. So that's in a nutshell how rotational inertia works. And we've also used it to apply to different situations. So, hope you enjoyed this short video on rotational inertia. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.